welcome back students so in this video we are going to learn about postulates of the quantum mechanics so why we need postulates in quantum mechanics because so so there was a set of experiments which was giving some results that was not being able to explain by people are not being able to explain by classical mechanics so that's why they come up with this quantum mechanics but this quantum mechanics to formulate the theory they needed some basic assumption to formulate this theory and that assumption is not based on any kind of like a that that is completely based on experimental observations so there is no direct that why they are called postulates because you cannot directly prove them but you can infer that they are true how they you can infer that they are true because where these postulates when you develop some theory based on these postulates and you test those theories on the real experiment and you get the results and you in turn verify that the theories are correct so the postulates based on which the theories are built are in terms you can say you can infer that they are correct so that's why you can say that this this these postulates are true because the theories based on these postulates giving the the best results best uh, match to the the best prediction to the experimental results but the postulates there is no way that you can directly prove them so there are basically five postulates in quantum mechanics the first one is state of a system so any physical system at a given time t can be represented as a wave function or a state like psi t in the hilbert space so the state of the any physical system can be represented as psi of the time t can be represented as psi of t in the hilbert space this is the first postulate this is the first postulate second one is observables and operators so any physically measurable quantity so any physically any physically measurable quantity let's suppose a so if it is if this present then there corresponds corresponds an operator which is linear and hermitian and which can be represented as a cap so for any physically measurable quantity a there corresponds an operator which is a linear hermitian and which can be represented as a cap and the eigen vectors of these operators forms a complete basis state so this is the second postulate the third one measurement and eigen values of operator so when you do a measurement on the system uh, on the system you always get a eigen value corresponding to your measurement so suppose you measure so the you can write it like a on psi t if you do a so this is the measurement the measurement of this operator of the to, to measure to of this physically measurable observable that can be represented as a cap operating on psi t so this will give you an psi nt 
required a n is psi psi n t so what that means is when you measure so the state of the system was psi t if you measure for some observable on this state you get a certain eigen value and the state collapses to this certain eigen function and this eigen value can be thought of as a projection of this eigen state on the main eigen state projection of main eigen state psi t projection of main eigen state on the psi nt okay at the eigen vector psi nt so this is the physical interpretation of this eigen value so this is the measurement and eigen value of operator this is the third postulate the fourth postulate is probabilistic outcome of measurement this is the this is the fourth fourth postulate the probabilistic measurement of the outcome so why it, why is we are saying the probabilistic outcome of the measurement because this an is one of the values one of the eigen values the eigen value could be anything but we get a result of as a result of the measurement we get an but this an could be anything so the probability of getting an is nothing but psi n and psi mod square divided by psi psi so this is the discrete form and you can also write it as a continuous form so for discrete form the of getting that discrete form getting the an the probability of getting the an will be this so this is the projection of psi on psi nt and the this is the all possible eigen values psi psi this is the all possible eigen values so and for a continuous form so getting a eigen value between a and da getting a eigen value between a and da that can be represented as psi a square divided by integration psi a prime square da prime minus infinity to infinity continuous form so this is the probability probabilistic outcome you will always get a one of the eigen values but there the psi is a linear superposition of uh, suppose many psi ns or this kind of states so this is this can be many things out of which you are getting only one value so this is a probabilistic outcome of measurement and the last one is time evolution of a system so all these four postulates we are talking about a particular time t so these are one set of postulates and the last postulate which is for a time evolution of the system and which is always uh, represented by the time dependent schrodinger equation it is always represented by the time dependent schrodinger equation which is i h cut del of psi t by del t can be written as h cap psi t where h cap is the where h cap is called hamiltonian which is a total energy operator of the system so the time evolution of the system can be written as this time dependent schrodinger equation i h cap del psi t del t and h cap psi t where h cap is the hamiltonian of the system or if this is the total energy operator for the system so these are the five postulates of quantum mechanics based on which the whole theory is built and uh, in these also there are two sets this four are for static time for a particular time t the, the last one is for time evolution and uh, yeah this will be all for this video and i hope this is clear if you have any doubt you can let me know in the comment section 
and if you have any suggestion for any videos like what kind of video or what kind of uh, what do you want to learn you can that also you can comment down all right so we'll meet in the next video